At 21, Bill Dowling's been to the Middle East, Berlin and Kenya with the army. Ah, you're saying, that was when the army was travelling. <laughs> They've never stopped. They're just off again. This time on a NATO exercise to Europe for six weeks. Britain's strategic command forces are training abroad in 21 countries this year. Trained men, professionals. Interested? Get the facts here or fill in this coupon in your TV paper. The last place in the world to leave a bottle is a beach. From time to time through history, the greatest need has been for facts. Facts to know where to build new schools, new houses, hospitals, factories, roads. We need facts to help fight sickness and disease. And that is why on April the 25th, we are asking you to fill in the 1971 census. An army of men and women with light blue satchels will deliver and collect them from every household in Britain. With no exceptions. The form is secret. There is nothing to fear from completing it. When its contents have been analysed, it will be locked away for a hundred years under guard. And all these officials are pledged to secrecy. Identify them by the blue satchel. It's the big form with a big job to do. We need the facts from you. One day when my dad went fishing, he took Charlie and me along. While he was fishing, we started having fun with the puddles. <laughs> shouted, come back here. But just then, Charlie tried to do an extra big jump and he went over the edge and into the water. Charlie nearly drowned. It was very lucky for him, he caught on the line. <laughs> Charlie says next time we go fishing, we should stay very close to Dad, where he can look after us. And he hopes that when you go near the water, you'll stay close to a grown-up too. Charlie says that stoves are dangerous to go close to because there are so many hot things there that can hurt you. If ever you see a box of matches lying around, tell Mummy because they can hurt you. Charlie and I were out the back when Vera and Dave came by and said, Come along for a picnic. And I was going, but Charlie said, He said I'd better tell Mum where I'm going. So we told him to wait while we went and asked. But Mum was talking to the milkman. And she talked such a long time that when I had asked her and she'd said yes, the others had gone. Mum 
asked us why we hadn't gone, and when I told her, she said we'd been good for not going, and would we like a day out with her instead? <laughs> Charlie says always tell your mummy before you go off somewhere so she knows who you are with. <laughs> Charlie and I were in the park. <laughs> then this man came up and said, Would I like to see some puppies? And I said yes. And I was going to go, but Charlie stopped me. <coughs> Charlie's reminded me, my mum says I shouldn't go off with people I don't know. Then the man went away. We went and told mummy, and she said we'd been very good. I got an apple and Charlie got something he likes. <coughs> he says never go anywhere with men or ladies you don't know. Charlie says he knows now that it's dangerous to pull the tablecloth because the hot water from the teapot hurts him very much. To you, it's just a worn-out fridge. But to a child, it's a caravan, a ship, a castle, even a bed. And a death trap, airtight and impossible to open from the inside. Don't let an old fridge be a new danger to children. Take off the door, or smash the lock, or better still, ask your local council to take it away or tell you how to dispose of it, before it kills a child. Come here. That's no way to cross the road, is it? Come over here, I'll show you a safe place to cross. Now here, there's no park cars to block your view. Nothing coming. Sure? Off you go. Straight across, mind. And keep your eyes open. It's part of the Green Cross Code. Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. The new decimal money will be with us on D-Day. Decimal Day. The 15th of February, 1971. The pound will be divided into a hundred new pence. And we'll do our decimal shopping in pounds and new pence only. Here are the new coins, six of them. The three silver ones are already in use. The 50 new pence equal to 10 shillings. The 10 new pence equal to two shillings and the five new pence equal to one shilling. The three copper coins will be introduced on D-Day. The two new pence, the new penny, and the new half penny. Remember, the pound stays the same. Only the coins which make up the pound are changing. A general election means one thing. It's your chance to decide who you want as your Member of Parliament. And the only way to make your opinion felt is by voting. It's quite straightforward. If you're entitled to vote, you should get an official poll card. It'll tell you which polling station to go to, and it'll be open from 7 in the morning to 10 in the evening. Go early if you can. You don't need your poll card to vote, but it may save you time. Make sure you know who you want to vote for. 
At the polling station, give your name and address, and you'll be given a ballot paper. In the booth, look for your candidate's name and put an X against it. Nothing else. Fold the paper and put it in the ballot box. Remember, if anyone asks who you voted for, you don't have to tell them. Your vote is your business. When your daughter goes to work for the first time, the excitement she feels with her own money to spend and crowds of new friends. Maybe she won't care what job she does before the gloss wears off. She may get married and have a family. And it's only when she thinks about working again that she'll feel let down, going back to unskilled work. But if she gets help to prepare for a satisfying job now, then later on, she'll have a career to go on with. Make sure your daughter sees her careers teacher at school and the local careers officer. Oh, Joe, I have enjoyed our country walk. Yes, we've come a long way, Petunia. Look, you can see our tracks right across that yellow cornfield. Oh, yes. It's ever so nice in this field, but I'm glad those cows have gone. Ah, they're taking themselves off for a walk down the road. Look, through that gate I opened. The one mark private. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh. Our little bingo's having a lovely time playing with those sheep. The exercise will do him good. <laughs> hey, I've hit that bottle, Petunia. <laughs> he smashed up a tree. Oh, very clever. You know, there's a farmer down there with a purple face. I expect it's all that sun in the open air life, Joe. Now he's doing one of those country dances. Well, I don't think he looks very friendly. Oh, maybe you're right. Though it can't be anything we've done. No. But I won't stay where I'm not wanted. Come on, Joe. When folk come out to the country, why, oh, why won't they follow the country code? It's ever so nice and peaceful up here, Joe. Nice view, too. Ah, very nice, Petunia. And look at that nice little boat. He's having a lot of fun out there in his little dingy. That's what they call them, you know, sailing dingy. Are they nice people at our hotel, Joe? <laughs> Hello. Now he's splicing his main bread. <laughs> Though I don't think the man on table number six is very nice. Hey, do you think he's in trouble, Petunia? Oh, no, Joe. He's just enjoying himself on holiday. Oh, he's decided to have a swim. Now he's going to climb back again. I expect that water's a bit cold, don't you? Oh, oh, he's changed his mind. Now he's waving to us. Go away! I can't say I recognise him, though. Well, he must know us. Maybe it's the gent on table number six. No, it's not him. He's much... Oh, now he's shouting. A lovely day, isn't it? Help! Help! Dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard! I can't hear a word he's saying, you know. Help. Dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. Well, I never. If you see a boat you think may be in distress, dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. is a beautiful country, not a litter bin. Keep Britain tidy. Public enemy number one, hunted all over the world. Messy job. Call on LDV, litter defense volunteers. Spotless, clean, tidy. Good humor, they strike against public enemy number one wherever he operates. Litter costs you money. Litter defense volunteers stop litter, save the cost of picking it up. With more public help, 
they do even better. Keep litter to yourself. Put it here. I am the spirit of dark and lonely water, ready to trap the unwary, the show-off, the fool. And this is the kind of place you'd expect to find me. But no one expects to find me here. It seems too ordinary. But that pool is deep. The boy is showing off. The bank is slippery. The show-offs are easy. But the unwary ones are easier still. This branch is weak, rotten. It'll never take his way. Only a fool would ignore this. But there's one born every minute. Under the water there are traps. Old cars, bedsteads, weeds, hidden depths. It's the perfect place for an accident. Oh, I look, there's someone in the water. Quick, give that big stick to get him out. Sensible children. I have no power over them. Oh, mate, that's a stupid place to swim. Hey, go over and get that thing to wrap him in. You do not feel cold, mate. How long was you in there? Ew, all thing. I'll be back. It can happen anywhere to anyone. An ordinary street, a moment's thoughtlessness. <laughs> If there isn't a crossing nearby, be extra careful. Use your eyes and ears before you cross the road and all the way across. You can't argue with a car. Eyes and ears. It's your lookout. Talk means danger, so get yourself seen. In the dark, make it light, but get yourself seen. Take a brush to your back, use some tape if you like, but get yourself seen. Make it big, make it bold, make it bright to be sure that you're seen. Keep your lights bright and clean, but get yourself seen. The world see your light is something that you treasure and get yourself seen. Make it big, make it bold, make it bright and get yourself seen. Go on, get it. We're not supposed to go in there. Oh, go on, there's a gap down there. A gang of kids broken yesterday. I saw them. Pass me that bit of wood. substation. The electricity board warns children to keep away from substations. Never try to get toys back yourself, otherwise you may not live to play with them again. Can you imagine being frightened of every friendly animal you meet? Imagine rabies in Britain. All dogs will be leashed and muzzled. Foxes will be destroyed. Wildlife at risk. No animal may be moved in or out of the infected area. All cats will be restrained. Get off, get off. Just one animal smuggled in could lead to all this. 
So if you suspect anyone of smuggling, tell the police. If rabies breaks out, any animal found loose will be seized, taken away, and if it is not claimed, destroyed. Rabies is a killer. We must keep rabies out. Here's how to remember the Green Cross curve. First, find a safe place to cross, then stop. Stand on the pavement near the curb. Look all round for traffic and listen. If traffic is coming, let it pass. When there is no traffic near, walk straight across the road. Keep looking and listening for traffic while you cross. Stay! Well, now we'll all remember the Green Cross code. And use it. Splink! Industry needs power. So do hospitals. So do essential services. At home, you could get by with less. So switch off some power. Now. This is me, thinking as usual about Dave. Dave is super. Dave can do anything. Oh, he's great. He really is. When pow! Up pops my fairy godmother with a I'll give you three wishes routine. Wish number one is easy. Next, I wish we were both at the seaside. Come on, Dave, let's swim, I say. It's just not my scene, man, says Dave. What he really meant was he couldn't swim. <whistles> I've still got one wish left, remember? Meet Mike. He right. swims like a fish. Yes, I wish. I wish I didn't keep losing me birds. Then learn to swim, young man. Learn to swim. If you can't swim, ask about lessons at your local swimming baths. Do learn to swim. It could save your life. Polish a floor and put a rug on it. You might as well set a man trap. Hurry up, bring him in the warm. All right. I'll put the kettle on. And to think he'd only just come from the hospital. A tragic, needless accident. But why did it happen? The driver checks the traffic on his right, the road seems to be clear, and he pulls out. But if we look again from the driver's angle, we can see his problem. Visibility isn't good, but if only he'd checked again, he would have seen the motorcyclist approaching. That car driver will be more careful next time. For the motorcyclist, there isn't going to be a next time. So motorists, be particularly careful at junctions. Think once, think twice, think bye. This is what happened one day when the ice cream van stopped by Tufty's house. Ice cream! And Tufty goes to find his mummy. Tufty always asks his mummy to go with him to the ice cream van. But Willie Weasel has gone off to get an ice cream by himself. Oh, dear. Oh, Mummy. Willie has been knocked down by a car. Now Willie has been hurt. And all because he didn't ask his Mummy to go with him to the ice cream van. When you want to go to the ice cream van, always take Mummy with you. Yes, there's a TV set on number five. It's in the front room. And they're watching Colombo. If you don't have a TV license, it won't take us long to find you. Why did 
really do it. Well, I know what I'd like to do to them. Did they see anything nice, anything decent? They just have to spoil it. It's the same in the park. They knocked out all the lampposts. And who pays out? We do. Oh, what's them doing it? Oh, you say anything. What's the point? Kids do as they please. Well, look at the state of the new underpass. Well, what about the bush shelter? Oh, and how long has that been up? About a week. If that. Oh, the police ought to do something. It's the parents, isn't it? Well, we're parents and our children don't go around vandalising. Well, we hope they don't. But we don't always know where they are, not all the time, do we? If I thought one of mine was behaving I like think this, it's the I'd... the schools. Oh, it makes me so oh. angry. Try telling them off. They're laughing your face. Well, you certainly can't reason with them. Right. So there's nothing we can do about it. Well, I, I just don't believe it. There is something you can do. Ring the police immediately. You need not give your name, but dial 999. You might save someone's property. You could save someone's life. Those of you who can't swim yet, then if you just wait over in the shallows for me. Kids and water, they love it. Rivers, canals, even the lily pond in the garden. You can't keep them away from it. Water has a fascination for children. And I should know, when I was three years old, I fell in the river at our place, couldn't swim, somehow managed to scrabble my way to the bank, frightened the wits out of my mum and dad. And you can bet they had me taught to swim very soon after that. But some children aren't quite so lucky. And if they can't swim and they go off by themselves to play by the side of some water somewhere, you know only too well what might happen. That's why I had my little girl taught to swim as soon as possible. So have your children taught to swim. They're never too young to start, and once they get that confidence in the water, they love it. Ask at your local swimming pool. All right? Or if you can swim yourself, why not teach them yourself? It's fun. See you.